Here it was recording. Slug! Hi. What's up, buddy? Nothing. Uh, we are here. We're going to do a order opening. I start, tried doing one this morning. There's a small section of that, uh, but I got stopped. So basically, uh, we get orders in at the shop every week. Uh, normally, it's products that people are buying, so it's a good opportunity for folks to kind of see what's coming into the shop, maybe things that are working for our customers, um, and provide some real-world feedback you know we're not doing a review of a video we're just talking about why we ordered it so i think that's cool um slug's going to join me here um are you excited to check out some products and stuff like that whichever camera's got the red light is the one you want to be looking at okay oh yeah you're excited yes oh, okay slug's been working at this shop for a long time he's used to come in all the time as a hoodlum and then we would, since he was here so much, I was like, you got to do something. So. I kind of just sat here and just did mm -hmm. nothing but talk. I sometimes didn't even buy anything. I just sit in here. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I made you start sweeping because <laughs> I was like, if you're going to be here, you're going to have to do something. So. And I started sweeping, and then you brought up being paid, and I was like, oh, I like money. So. You had to, how long did I make you volunteer, though, before I offered you a job? It was I think a I was time. volunteering at, like, 12, and then 13, I think I started. All right, well, let's not wait. have that conversation. It might be illegal. <laughs> well, I would just, like, come in and sit, because I, like, go up to the bike park after school. I think I was 13, actually, because I was in seventh grade. So we got tires yeah. here. Um, these were just kind of filling some holes here at the shop. Uh, we've got an aggressor, um, a minion DHR, Ooh, good, good. Um, and then uh, another minion DHR and another aggressor. So we'll put those guys together. Um, you can see here the difference in tread patterns. I'm not a big fan of the aggressor, but everybody else seems to be. So people like that. We did bring in the 2-3 29er and a double down. Um, you just switched to, you just switched to uh, Max's tires, didn't you, Slug? Uh, on my front tire. What'd you put? Uh, DHF. DHF. How did that feel compared to what do you have, so like much, an XR3 on there? I had an XR2. An XR2. Oh yeah. It's so much better. Did you? So much more grip. I can actually lean into corners, not worry if my front's going to disappear. Mm -hmm. You felt more confident? Yeah. That's good. Uh, but yeah, people are looking at tread patterns here. Again, we've done this on Minions. The Double Downs can be a very heavy tire. Not quite as heavy as a DH tire, um, but Double Down is what a lot of people are running on their rears right now. So we brought it in in the 2.3 to kind of keep weight down a little bit. Uh, it's like 400 grams more than um, a regular one. And then uh, we've got a 2.4 here and just see a regular EXO sidewall. So we've got a lot of limestone here in Missouri. It is very sharp, so we recommend our customers use at least an EXO sidewall. Um, these are all going to be tubeless ready, uh, dual compound tires. Um, but an EXO sidewall, if you want to do EXO Plus, that's great. That's going to give you silk shield in there as yeah, well. Yeah, I need an XO Plus because I got an XO on my rear. Mm -hmm. and it's holding up, but I got two little slashes. I don't even remember it. I just remember looking at it one day when I was cleaning down my bike after, and I was like, oh, I have some scratches in my rear tire so trying to replace that yeah so that's tires i mean i think tires kind of speak for themselves i don't know if there's much else to really say about tires other than that's what they are um, people have their preferences minion dhrs are definitely the most popular if you're going to go to a double down just know you're going to sacrifice uh you're it's going to weigh a lot more you know two three hundred grams probably we have previous videos where we weighed such tires we should go around and just weigh it. We should do a video next week where we just weigh every tire. I'll make you do it. Remind me of that. Um, Justin does help out with a lot of, or Slug does. He's, this is the first actual video you've sat down with me. But you've been on the channel often. You're normally behind the glass. So we figured we'd get you out in front of the glass this time. So I didn't have to do this by myself. I think like so one I time I was that. actually on camera was like last year when you and Smiley were doing one. Oh, you came by. And, no, I, I came by several well, times, you did but have then a one time I like poked my head in and I was like, can I have help with a customer or something like that? Or like, can I go now? Or I, I, It was something where like it was, oh no, Dustin came in and he was asking because Smiley's parents were there and wanting him to leave. Oh, but you yeah. guys weren't done, so you were finishing up the episode. I think I stayed there till like, 8 o'clock that night. Yeah, I remember one when we were in the watch shop, and you, like, dipped your head in 
Like, I remember, like, just seeing you when I was trying to, like, edit videos together, just constantly, just your face, just <laughs> right by. It was always so funny. Um, but anyhow, um, we'll jump back into it here. So we did grab, I needed some new cable cutters at the shop. I um, mean, we also needed some uh, for the floor here for our customers. So a good set of cable cutters. Um, we've, again, done a video. You guys may or may not have seen the shorts. You can look it up. Uh, but the kind of the best way to get better shifting is if your cable, if A, just get a new cable. But if you're not wanting to redo your internal housing, you don't have time for all that, rip your cable out trim the ends with a nice cable cutter. It's gonna be hard to use anything around the house or out of your tool chest. I guess I could show people up close. These are the Pedro's cable cutters. Uh, slug, go run and grab me the ones I have opened up over there. So, cable yeah, cable cutters are gonna, it's gonna help hold the shape of the cable and it's also gonna make easy work of it. Um, and grab me, there's a piece of cable on the ground over oh, there. Oh, I think I threw that away. Let All right, never mind, just bring those to me then. I think it's just, there it is. Pedro's makes good stuff. It makes a really clean cut. So whether you're cutting your housing or your cable, um, it's going to do a nice job. Thank you, Justin, or Slug. I got to get used to that. <laughs> He's so fast, I just don't remember to call it. Um, but they're going to make a nice clean cut, and it's going to happen easily. If you try using just like snips or anything like that, it's going to be a huge whatever. pain in the ass. It's going to not work out great, and these are going to fray. So, um, yeah, get a set of cable cutters. That way you can just simply cut it. This is what makes Slug such a great employee. This is why we don't have time to put them on camera. Because he's always too busy taking care of cleaning up our messes. <laughs> Um, but yeah, cable cutters are really nice. Pedro's does a good job. I really like those Pedro's ones. Um, the park tool ones are decent as well. Um, but you know, check those guys out. More Pedro's tools to consider. Um, we've got a set of Allen. So, um, again, if you're going to have a, if you're going to be mountain biking, your bike's going to be shaking loose a lot. Parts are going to loosen up. You need to be doing bolt checks. So a simple set here is going to give you everything. This gives you from a 1.5 all the way up to a 10. Oh, but, that's more than my multi-tool. Yeah. So what what do you think the most common Allens that people use are? What are the most common ones? So if you're Five. going to work on your bike, what's, what Allen should you grab off your tool bag? Five. Five? Maybe like a six. I know six some like seats good. and stuff have sixes. Sure. Maybe more modern bikes, less sixes, but yeah. Uh, I think like, what is it, like a 3.5 or 2.5? All of them are going to be important, really. But no, kind of your five is going to be most things. Your suspension components might have six millimeter bolts on them. Um, your stem and your handlebars, you're going to have like a four mil. Um, yeah. So you're going to need this whole entire whole set here. You can't get away with just having one. And using your multi-tool is great if you're out on the trail, but you need something that you can actually get into places and control your tool. You don't want to have all the other tools dangling off your one tool. It would be absolutely ridiculous if I were to take this set of Allen wrenches if I take this set of Allen wrenches and I just need to use the five, so I wouldn't want to use it like this, right? Oh no. That would be terrible. So that's what you're doing. You're using, you're leaving every tool connected trying to use this one um, if you're using your multi-tool at home. So get a dedicated set of Allen's and only use them for your, your mountain bike. Don't use them for anything else around the house. You're going to have a rounded over side here um this rounded section is going to help you get into some hard to reach places which is what happens with a bike um but you need to be careful that you're not doing two things what's the rule justin about the 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 different ends of the wrench don't ever tighten it as much as you can with the end and don't ever loosen it as much as you can with the end with the ball end. yeah with the ball mm -hmm. end. so what yeah what slug strength does is that you know you can to break a bolt free or to put your final tightening down you need to be using 
the standard square it off one. If you use this round one, you're gonna round out your bolt possibly. You're definitely gonna destroy the tool over time doing that. So you can use the rounded side to get in there so you can just spin something on real fast. But then that final snug, you gotta do with the other end. You can't do it with the ball ends. You need to get in there, even if you can only turn a little bit and have to reset and just do one flat at a time, so be it. Um, put your final tension down with the squared off edge here. Um, so this guy here, the squared off edge, and then the rounded edge, that's after you've already broken your bolt free or previous to putting in your, your tension because you're going to destroy that if you don't. Yeah, I've so. done that, I think, like once or twice here. Mm -hmm. and, so, and I noticed, so <laughs> I? <laughs> I think you were, like, right there with me. I yep. think it was, like, I don't remember what it was, but you told me to, it was, like, tighten this, and I started tightening down. It was my bike, I think. And I started to strip the screw out, mm -hmm. and that, yeah. Yep, and that's why, you know, we have you work on your own bike when you're doing things, and why we, you know, as you're learning to work on your bike, we keep under supervision. That's something to keep in mind for guys that are at home that might be working on their bike. When you're doing these bolt checks, you're just snugging things down. Don't go too crazy, um, and especially if something doesn't feel smooth, it's not right. Just stop at that point, right? That happens a lot as well, I think. That's what I did with my shifting. At the Nike race last weekend, I tried to uh, mess with my shifting because mm -hmm. I couldn't get into my last gear or my highest. Mm -hmm. I completely messed it up. I had to have my coach help me. Mm -hmm. um, so, yeah, I, it, I pretty sure I have a video on derailleur adjustment, basic rear derailleur adjustment. Have you seen that on the YouTubes? If people subscribe, they'll be yet. aware of all these things that come up. Because essentially how videos come up, same way these, these, these order openings do, is it comes up a lot in the shop. I'm like, all right, I might as well do a video on that because I've now talked about this a dozen times in the last week. Um, and one of those important things is a chain checker. Everybody wow. should have a chain checker at home. Manufacturers will recommend different things. Um, Shimano recommends you change your chain after 0.5. So these are what they call no-go gauges. So you hook this section into your chain, and then you see if this section falls in or not. So, um, you know, it's something you should be checking on your bike every maybe once a month would be good. Uh, once it gets to 0.5, you definitely need to start thinking about changing your chain. Um, you know, if it gets to, you have all the way to like 0.75, though, to take care of it. If you're cleaning and lubing your chain on a regular basis, your chain's going to last longer. If you haven't done that, the grit, the grind is going to kind of loosen everything up in there. You'll notice like your chain will feel super flexible back and forth. You'll be like, ooh, this doesn't, this feels loose, you know? Yeah. Um, you know, they call it stretch, and it's basically just like how a chain's built. Like you have these two interlockers here. Well, where those interlock, the pin that you push through is like, isn't it it's like called a roller and it's like in a sleeve essentially so as over time it you know wallers those those pins out and then extra room causes in there and the chain slightly stretches so you won't really notice the stretch per se is more you'll be able to feel it moving back and forth really easy it'll just feel really loose and janky so um, that's how you'll kind of know or you can just pick up a chain checker it's eleven dollars for a mountain biker um, this is a good idea. And of course you can think if you have lubrication on those things, they're not going to wear out as fast. If you have dirt on those things, that dirt's going to act as sandpaper inside there, um, and destroy everything. So get a chain chucker. That's important. People should love to have a chain chucker. Um, another great maintenance tool, tubeless sealant. But I don't ride tubeless. You don't ride tubeless. Justin doesn't have the privilege to ride tubeless. Do you hope to be able to go tubeless one day? Yes. That would I'd, be nice. I would very much like having tubeless. Or, and then, because being able to, like, get a flat and then it fix itself. Mm -hmm. And then you also have Or to be able to plug it, even if it doesn't fix itself, you can plug it while the wheel's still on the bike. You got a plan B, You got, and then you have a plan C, because if all else fails... You can just slap a tube in there anyways. Put a tube in, yeah. So yeah, tubeless is really nice to have. Um, you can run <laughs> lower tire pressures, feel more in control. Um, and then, of course, repairs are going to be much simpler on trail with the tubeless setup. Um, you're not removing that wheel from the bike. So that saves a lot of time and effort. So if it's a really cold day or a really hot day, that can make racing. a big difference. Or during a race. 
Um, so yeah, you may not even know you had a puncture because it took care of it for you. Stands it has been and probably will always be the most popular sealant here at the Mountain Bike Shed. Um, people absolutely love stands, so we continue to carry it here. Uh, WTB orange seal, they're really nice as well. What do you think you'll go with? Will you be a stands guy? Stands. Yep, Use it stands. here, so I trust it. It is funny. Sealant is one of those things where people are like very, like, this is the sealant I use, and then this is what I love. It's kind of like uh, there's a lot of brand loyalty within sealants. I also just like the look of the stands bottles. They just look cool. Yeah, and I mean, and that's all for good reason, too, because there is a difference in quality. Um, I know, like, we brought finish line in listen to this justin you won't I, let's hear what i think you, i remember hearing you talking about this like once to a customer oh, it's terrible so finish line <laughs> back in the year uh year of our lord 2019 2018 um finish line released a new tubeless sealant finish line is a maker of lubes i don't get we don't carry any finish line products in the shop what are you talking about we have finish line brake fluid <clears throat> That's because the Shimano sold out, <laughs> so it's random. Adam, <laughs> you're lying. Well, I would prefer not to have that. Actually, brake fluid is the only, that is the only finish line product in the shop. Finish line brake fluid. But the reason why I don't like finish line um, is they released a tubeless sealant in 2019-ish, 2018, and they said it was lifetime sealant. Like you just put it in once and forget it? And you're done. That's it. That doesn't sound right. It wasn't right. That's like to find out. that's like buying a thing of milk and then saying the ex expiration date is never, and then like three weeks later, it's hard as your kitchen counter. Yeah, so that's what we found out is that the, the and no one no one was really buying this when they said it and released the product, but it said on the the um, the bottle it lasts the lifetime of the tire. It's so not always, but, you know, however long they think a tire would last normally. Which, like, which would you would assume it'd be more than six months. Yeah, my a year, tire, two years. I normally, my tires last like a year. My rear tire I put on, like, I want to say like around October last year. Mm -hmm. And it's getting close to that. Mm -hmm. And I'm about to replace it. Mm -hmm. Just, it's still good and mm -hmm. it has enough tread to get me going. Yeah, and um, so, yeah, it, it didn't last forever. It, it lasted for a normal amount of time, maybe worse. It didn't really seal up punctures very well. <laughs> then, you know, poor tape jobs, it really didn't uh, bail out like maybe Stan's race would. So, um, yeah, it was terrible. Um, and then um, a, a friend that has one of my favorite lube companies also kind of told me some stories about that company as well. So I just do not like them. I would rather not have finish line products in the shop. If SRAM or Shimano could get more uh, brake fluid in, that would be great. Um, <laughs> it is what it is. Um, so yeah, refill sealant, check sealant on your tires. Probably once a month, you should hear it sloshing around in there. Um, have you seen like uh, all the stuff we pull out of people's tires? I often make you clean tires for me. That's kind of your job here at the shop a lot I've of times. I've had to do it twice but the one time i did it on the downhill bike wasn't fun because when the tire was hard to put back on but besides that it was i don't know i just don't like the feel of it it's like it's like nickelodeon slime but worse mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. yeah you put on gloves the one time i told you take the gloves off yeah you told me to take the gloves off, take the gloves off. and then you said to just so do it with my you. hands, but then you start doing it with a rag, and I was like, what are you doing with a rag for? You just don't want to use my hands. Um, we have a, uh, so that's, we got just a couple of um, shop parts back there, things I like to keep in stock here. Um, one of them is going to be, it's kind of like a magic, um, this packaging. And SRAM does do a great job Ooh. with their packaging. I do like that packaging. Um, this is going to be a GX shifter, so we always recommend anybody with NX or below, upgrade to a GX shifter. Um, you're going to get actual bearings in here, opposed to bushings on some different parts. Really, the shifting quality is more immediate, um, a lot cleaner. So even if you're still running a NX derailleur, it's a good idea to jump on with a uh, GX shifter. So do that first. It's going to be cheaper. I think this is like 50 bucks. 
Whereas like a new GX derailleur is going to be closer to like 130, 140. So um, for 50 bucks, you can improve your shifting without having to do anything crazy. And if you're already changing your cable anyway, boom, you're rocking and rolling. So, so when you go to trim the ends of your cable with the cable cutter, because you're like, oh, my cable's frayed. My shifting's like really slow getting back into my high gears. This is silly. You're going to be like, I need a new cable and housing. And you're like, I don't feel like dealing with internal routing. So you pull your old cable off. You pull your NX shifter off. You buy a GX shifter from the mountain bike shed, mtbshed.com. Have one shipped directly to your house. Um, buy a GX shifter that's going to come with a cable on it. So you're going to get that new cable. Before you stick it on, use your Pedro's cable cutters to trim the ends. Put your caps back on. Make sure your caps aren't damaged as well. Um, and then you're going to slide uh, this cable in, and then you're going to be good as golden nuggets. I want to trust myself to do that repair, but... You could. You can, if you are subscribed to MTB Shed live on YouTube.com, YouTube.com slash MTB Shed, um, I have videos on that really to do it really easily. So you're, <coughs> you're welcome. Wait, wasn't that little paper thingy on the, underneath? The... That's okay. We want it on top now. So, yeah, really nice pack. I do love Tram's packaging, especially compared to Shimano. Um, this, this is, yeah, this is an XT cassette. And you can already hear it rattling around inside. So the XT cassette is a really nice upgrade. This is going to run you closer to 150 bucks um, or so, probably a little bit more than probably a little north of that. Um, I think it's maybe 160. But an XT cassette's a really nice upgrade. You might ask yourself, why, Adam? Why would I need it? I have a cassette. It seems to be fine. What can be so great? Well, there's a few things that are great about this. Um, one thing, it's, well, it's Hyper Glide Plus, so it's just going to make your shifting smoother. It, it looks way cooler. Like, you have a Dior cassette on your bike? Yeah, I don't like Dior. Uh-oh. So, this is Where'd nice. I, I would get a new cassette, but new bike first. So a, an XT cassette is going to be about half the weight as a Dior cassette. Ooh. Half the weight. I like the saving weight. And it's pretty. I, I mean, okay, I shouldn't say half the weight because I forget people are watching this. <laughs> but it is, a, a, an XT cassette is considerably lighter um, than a Dior cassette is. So it's a really nice upgrade. Plus the ramping is going to be a little bit finer. Um, and that's going to allow for um, smoother, faster, better shifting. So if you can upgrade your Dior cassette to an XT cassette, um, or if you need to replace your cassette, don't do another Dior. Invest, you know, you're investing like another like 60 bucks maybe over the price of a Dior cassette when you go to upgrade it. But the performance upgrade is going to be huge. So um, spend the extra money your cassette ideally would last you a year or two. Um, if you're, you know, just kind of a normal rider. Um, so if your cassette's lasting you a year or two, spread that extra $60 over 24 months. It costs you about $7 a month or a dollar a ride for better shifting. That's how I like to break down the cost of parts to customers all the time. <laughs> I'm just like, well, this bike's technically a hundred bucks more. You're going to have this bike for what? Five, ten years, so over ten years, hundred that's ten dollars more a year, one dollar a month. How many how how many times do you think you're gonna ride your bike a month? At least a couple of times, right? So fifty cents a ride, that's what we're talking about. Get the nicer bike. Let's go. Which is true. I mean, you know, it's not James Porter right there. I don't I you know, mountain biking's fun. I don't need to like convince people into it. You know, our role and I think you you understand this is here at the bike shop, our role is in, I'm not trying to sell anybody. I tell you guys not to like sell anybody or anything, but our job is to just help people figure out what they need. You know, that's the biggest thing. That's uh, where we can help our customers the most, I feel like. Well, that's nice, Slug. Do you think an XT upgrade is in your future one day? Not with my bike. Not with your bike. I'm saving up for a new one. New bike. Why are you saving up for a new one? Uh, I want a full suspension, Whoa. be able to race the Enduro Series, maybe some bigger bigger lines, more confident in jumping, and uh, I just think full suspensions look cooler. 
All right, this is a Dior shifter, 12-speed Dior shifter. Why did you order this, you might ask? Cheap. Um, yeah, I just need it for a uh, stock bike replacement. Um, it is cheaper. It's like 35, 35 bucks, maybe opposed to like 65 So if I have a customer who's really not wanting to put extra money into their bike, we do have this. But again, I would always recommend if you are replacing a shifter, not to go with the base level. Go up to XT if you're running Shimano. Go up to GX at least, maybe X01 um, if you're if you're running a SRAM drive train. <coughs> what do you think is better, SRAM or Shimano? Uh, well, well it, it's it's unfortunate I have to pause. Uh, normally I would say Shimano hands down, but if we're talking 12 speed, um, then SRAM I think easily has the market cornered. They're Shifting's more reliable, their technology is more advanced, access is amazing. Isn't one of them like you can shift under pressure? Uh, yep, yep. Oh, the new transmissions, yeah. They prefer being shifted under load. Um, so, yeah, really cool stuff um, that's available from SRAM with 12 speed. They're definitely running away with the 12 speed market, and they always have been ahead of the game. Shimano's been playing catch up for a long time. Now, what do you think is better, 12 speed or? 11 or 10. Or I would rather have I would rather have <laughs> 10 speed Shimano XT with XT Shimano four piston brakes over any other setup. Why? I like XT. And 10 speed's going to be the strongest. I and I can bang my derailleur in the middle of a ride and it's still it can be moved a little bit and everything's still going to work pretty decently. On my 12, 12 speed setup if I bang a rock or I fall, I crash, I bend my derailleur hanger a little bit. I guess if I have maybe a transmission, I don't have to worry about this anymore. But normally, you would have issues with shifting being off and things along those lines. So like 10-speed, chain's going to be stronger, it's thicker, all the components are thicker, they're going to last longer. Um, so I still really love 10-speed. I'm old school about it, um, you know, but... If I were to set up a bike today, I would set it up with 12-speed, SRAM, Eagle, I probably... Probably Axis. I'm not the biggest fan of um, wireless stuff, but I think it's you know I think it's definitely the way we're going, and I think for a majority of people, it's best. I have a shop, so you know I'll take the positive cable. I like driving a manual <laughs> transmission car. I like riding a motorcycle. I like shifting gears and pulling clutch levers, and you know doing all that stuff. So um, I don't like the feel of an electronic drivetrain. I think it, it's kind of silly, so, but works well, and you don't have to worry about dirty cables anymore, which is a reason why most of our customers have a worse ride is their cables are dirty. They need to change or upgrade their cable and housing, or it's damaged, or something happens. So, if we can get rid of that, I'm all aboard on wireless drivetrains on access if it means our customers are going to have a better experience on the trail which they are doesn't access also like auto adjust kind of yeah and the transmission will like get out of the way kind of stuff yeah it's pretty amazing what SRAM's done with that yep absolutely all right justalini i think that's about it i appreciate you joining me for an order opening that was a lot to go through you this is a long one maybe we'll split it into two I don't know, but people can go online. Any of the stuff we talk about is going to be available at mtbshed.com. Um, you can check what we have here in stock. I don't have all of our service parts uh, in the inventory, but um, you can see a good amount of things. And normally if something's here, it's here for a reason. Um, or you can check any of our warehouses across the country. We can ship directly to you. So you can support the shop that way. Hit the subscribe button um, and be looking out for more videos of Slug as we sneak up behind him. Today, your air horn video got like a thousand views within a couple hours. I do not like that air horn anymore. Now you're just like... You're, you scared me! You're basically tempting me to keep going after you now with an air horn. I actually won't because... I feel like I'm going to like walk in someday and you're just going to like honk it in the, out of the middle of nowhere. I'd like to think that I would do that. I would love to do that. But I, <laughs> it is really loud. So like I'm worried that I would like actually hurt your hearing in doing so. So yeah, I, I likely won't uh, continue <laughs> likely. to mess with you. But uh, we'll see. All right, guys. Tune in next time.